We've already shown off a multitude of mechanics and concepts that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild never explains outright, yet there's so much more we're finding out about the game even beyond the 50 hour mark. With so many secrets still hidden in its mysterious world, we've compiled 8 more useful things to know to help you on your journey. Be wary, there are potential spoilers ahead. If you enjoy this video, like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more features on Breath of the Wild, and be sure to watch our previous videos on all the things I wish I knew before I started. If you find a dog in any of the towns or stables, don't just crouch down and nuzzle it. Feed the pup three pieces of meat or fruit to show it you care. After doing so, it'll lead you to a treasure chest hidden in the surrounding area. For example, if you feed the doggo in Hateno village, it takes you to a chest containing a silver rupee. Make sure to feed all the pups in Hyrule to acquire all sorts of secret treasure. Like in past Zelda games, if you use excessive force against a Kuko, it'll call upon a swarm of its friends to attack you. While triggering a Kuko swarm isn't in your best interest, it's possible to make it work in your favor. Simply grab a Kuko and bring it with you into battle, and whichever unfortunate enemy happens to hit you will be swarmed and pecked to death. It's important to note that a Kuko swarm only does minimal damage against higher leveled enemies like Guardians and Lionels so don't push your luck. Guardians are a tremendous threat early on, mostly because of their incredibly destructive laser blasts. But if you have decent reflexes, you can actually parry a Guardian's laser blast with your shield and send it straight back at them. To do so, get close to a Guardian and wait for it to charge up a shot. When you hear a beep, that's your cue to press A. Do this three times to make a standard Guardian explode, though a stationary Guardian can be destroyed with one shot. Once you've mastered parrying Guardian shots, these once dangerous foes become much less threatening. It's also one of the most efficient ways to defeat a Guardian, as it doesn't require any weapon use, nor does it wear down your shield's durability. Be wary, this tactic is incredibly ineffective against multiple Guardians, as it can only be implemented while locking onto one of them. So once again, don't push your luck. After spending hours traveling across Hyrule on horseback, do you ever find yourself wishing you could customize the appearance of your trusty steed? Well, Breath of the Wild makes it possible. Simply go to the outskirts stable, which lies to the north of the Great Plateau and west of the Colosseum ruins. When you reach the stable, talk to Connie, the lady tending the horses outside. She offers to change out your horse's saddle or bridle with any new ones you've found, but she also lets you alter the mane of your horse. Looking to style your horse's mane with some sweet French braids? Or maybe you'd like to give it a long, flowing green mane. Connie can make it happen. I personally prefer the mohawk mane for Epona Jr. here. It's edgy. Keep in mind, Connie only offers her services to horses that are raised with lots of love. So if you don't have a max bond with your horse, she'll reject you. Have you ever spotted a guardian in the distance while on horseback and thought, oh, uh, well, looks like I'm not going that way. Well, you'll be surprised to know that you can actually use your horse to charge straight through it. Simply spur your horse in the direction of an approaching guardian and watch as it tumbles over the both of you. It's worth noting that if you don't charge through the guardian's center base, it might not flinch much from your charge. So be careful in your approach and make sure to keep spurring your horse on to maximize your force of impact. This technique can also be used to repeatedly tear off of a guardian's legs, drastically hindering its movement. You'll often encounter a fair amount of rusty weapons, which, while useful at first, eventually become obsolete as you find stronger weapons to add to your arsenal. But don't just ignore every rusty weapon you find. Make sure to keep a couple in your inventory for the inevitable moment you encounter a rock octorok in the Death Mountain region. This might seem strange, but try tossing a rusty weapon onto the ground for the little critter to suck up. After it does so, wait a few seconds, and it'll spit out the weapon in brand new condition. Keep in mind, the weapon it spews out is randomized based on the weapon type. For example, if you toss it a rusty broadsword, you might get a traveler's sword, while another time you'll get the more powerful royal broadsword. Take advantage of this refurbishment technique to nab some decently powered weapons. 
Often in your journey, you'll work hard to figure out how to survive some of the world's more extreme weather conditions. There are a few specialized clothing options and elixirs that can help keep your body temperature in check, but there's actually a little known alternative, elemental weapons. Elemental weapons affect your body temperature, and depending on which you choose, your body temperature will either increase or decrease. For example, if you're in the hot, arid Gerudo Desert, equipping an ice rod or a great frost blade will lower your body temperature. This is a handy technique to use in your travels, as it lets you keep your stronger armor equipped while in extreme climates. It's also a great option if you simply lack the other survival options available to you. Hidden in the outskirts of Hyrule is a mysterious merchant named Kilton. To find this eccentric peddler, wait until nighttime, and then head to the left eye of Skull Lake. When you talk to Kilton, he tells you he's going to set up shop at various villages across the land before disappearing to do just that. To find him, search the outskirts of any of the main villages and towns between 8pm to 4am. Kilton's shop is relatively easy to identify. It appears as a patchwork hot air balloon from a distance. Once you find him, Kilton sells an assortment of useful and quirky monster-related items, such as the much sought-after monster extract cooking ingredient, or a moblin mask, which allows you to blend in with moblins. However, you can only purchase these items using a special currency known as Mon, which you can acquire by trading in monster parts to Kilton. Make sure to visit Kilton's shop often, as he frequently stocks up on a variety of new and useful items. After all, you never know when you might need a Bokoblin mask to blend in slash party with a pack of unassuming Bokoblins. What other cool mechanics have you found? Let us know in the comments below, and for more coverage on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.